for some reason, it did not put the video up um, that I put up an hour ago. When I put it, try putting it up again, uh, they say it's a duplicate. I can understand why they don't want to. For one thing, if you may, I'm spontaneous, and I, ha I can't redo something with the same emotion or anything. And when I started doing the video, it kind of uh, got to me remembering. I'm going to try to say a little bit more here. I feel bad anyway because of what's going on here. I've told who my father is and about the kidnapping, and he was married to Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, sister to artist George O'Keefe. He never married this, uh, I have better names for her, but she's a American spy that married the double. There was a couple of doubles and became the illegal Duke and Duchess of Windsor. This is a, um, Snowden. Edward Snowden, and uh, he's done nothing wrong, and he didn't. It's like me. I've not done a darn thing wrong and, except tell the truth and be born, I guess. Uh, this is uh, the Boston Marathon where the bombings happened. He's uh, from Russia, I believe. I told about Larry Flint. Uh, he was shot. I'm not going to show that again. I wanted to try to put up what I had uh, a little bit of it. I've forgotten now. All of it. Uh, I can't go back and do the same thing because there's a lot of pain involved in it and it won't show here. Once I reduce, I can't do, like I could never do comedy because I can't read from somebody else's script, okay? Whatever you want to say there. Now let me get to this before, if I can. I was telling about going, this is just prior to getting that letter from the FBI, which was June the 23rd of 79, from the U.S. Attorney's Office, um, ongoing investigation, national security involved. Now, uh, just prior to then, I had lived at Moon Record, moved uh, from Moon Record, Journey's Inn Restaurant, beautiful, the only time I've ever lived in really super nice places. I had been owned by uh, Penthouse Magazine, and the Mormon Church owned it when I lived there. Of course, it has to do with genealogy, too. And I found out about my kidnapping and who my dad is and the uh, character assassination to take him down and my mom with him. You don't even see her picture anywhere. Now, I want to get back to this because I went to, uh, I didn't know the FBI were always in on this, so there you go. And I'm going to show a letter in a minute, if I can, Jack Hartsville, who, bless his heart, he died last year. He went back to Huntsville, working for the Huntsville Times. And um, he had been out in Santa Fe when I was out there in 84. I'm going to show that in a minute. He uh, worked for the New Mexican News, which was next door to George O'Keefe's Ghost Ranch, my aunt. So it was uh, in 83 I started to find out about my real name, but I wanted to get back to this. I don't know what's going on there. With her. He's from Alabama, too. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to get back to this. I went to the satellite office in Marietta, uh, and I was living in Marietta. And uh, it was an old building, and you had to go up the back. I went after hours for some reason, and it was kind of dark and scary. And I went out up the back stairs to the FBI office, and it was Agent Guest. And he was sitting there as a small room, and I talked to him for, for a few minutes, a little bit. And I left, and uh, it wasn't <laughs> two weeks later, I don't think, a little later, that that satellite office that had been there for about 30 years, give or take a little, was suddenly torn down. Uh, I moved then, this is in 78, and I moved, um, well, late 78, I moved from Moonraker up the street to uh, Laurelwood on Bentley Drive. And I think I got the letter from Agent Guest on the day I moved in at the post, my post office box. That was May the 8th of 79. And he wrote it in ink, red ink, and mailed it to me. And I kept it, and it was part of the FBI letter that was taken from me, my book, 
letters where I'd uh, sent it to publishers, and most of all, the lab report that came back and that I finally got a hold of where they tried to kill me April Fool Day of 80. They put antifreeze in me. All that was taken off from me. This is what I just put up on the tape that they won't put up. They keep saying it's a duplicate. I just made it like I'm doing this one. But it had a lot of emotions on it because I went through hell. I took it to Reagan, and it wasn't on the other tape I mentioned, video I mentioned. It was the Capitol. It was the uh, mail room at the White House. And you have to log it in. And uh, it was logged in. I signed it. And I had a letter from the FBI on top of the box with a book and all this in it. And... um, it was uh, his adopted son, Reagan. He had the uh, lapel pin on and all that I gave it to. So on the way back, I'm not going to say what happened to me. It is hell all the way. Uh, it's a story that you think, anyway. Uh, let me just say I was taken out in the forest and all that taken off of me and what happened when I got back to Atlanta, and let me remind you, I had a divorce that had alimony, which I hadn't collected. I I tried to work, but then I was almost killed, and my ex-husband was a part of it, and like Mr. Flint says, I know who was responsible for his shooting, I was writing about mind control, and it was about doctors, was uh, Congressman Dr. Larry McDonald from Atlanta. Now, he was in on this, and uh, Beecham was one of the doctors in Chelton who weren't, Chelton wasn't even supposed to be there. I went for a talk screen April Fool Day of 80. It wasn't done. I was illegally, t- and Beecham was part of it, and he's still in practice in Gonzales. In Gonzales, this is the elderly Gonzales. He has a son named Victor Gonzales, Jr. There was a seal put on something that should be told because nothing of the truth was told there. And you, anyway, I'm going to leave that there because Hustler Magazine, Larry Flint knew about that, too. He told me he knew everything there was to know about me. I didn't need to say anything, and he did. He, uh, I remember what he did about that, so that was done about that, so he knew. Oh, but anyway, I want to get back to this. I moved in to Laurelwood and um, got the letter from uh, Agent Guest, and it was done in red ink. And uh, I can't remember what that said, and Agent Guest was nice. Well, the agents were. Oh, they were good to me there uh, in Atlanta, and I don't know that I'd be alive. I couldn't remember Malcolm Barber's name. And uh, I wanted to mention him. I don't know if they're alive or get some in trouble if I tell it. There was uh, the phone number after I got the letter about uh, there was an investigation. I know now they were there since I was small, the FBI, when I was kidnapped, brought over here. A letter from Jack. Uh, I put it up before. There were FBI agents in Huntsville, Alabama, the Space Center, when I was brought over there, when I was kidnapped. So I can't put all this up again. But it wasn't just a beginning of an investigation. I thought it was because of the book and a wiretap on my phone. When it's who I am, it's the kidnapping. But anyway, um, this is a phone call that came through from uh, FBI headquarters to me at Laurelwood. And it's after I got the letter. So that was after June the 23rd of 79. And the gentleman was supposed to be Michael Kean. But now he was special agent, and I know it wasn't Michael Kean. Now, I don't know which agent, but it, I, believe me, I was down at FBI headquarters. And uh, I'm not going to go into some other stuff. I found out later that I had been down there years before, and I didn't even... I didn't remember it until I was shown a picture. Uh, So anyway, this wasn't um, Special Agent Kean, although he was a special agent there until 1980 when they brought in the profilers and all the Wayne Williams and all that.
By then, I'd had the antifreeze put in me and almost dead and across the state line. Now I want it to get back. Laurel wood is like Laurel, Maryland. It's used in the patterns uh, that the mind control murders were deliberately done in. And uh, that gets back to George Wallace being shot. And uh, Lina Dempsey, mother of the twins, where they took me to Moulton, Alabama, and gave me her twins, her daughter's name, Peggy, and, and I'm uh, Dempsey and I married Childers. Uh, they took my name. Both the twins were dead. They were killed by the mom, and it was covered up by the family. And I found out in late 83. So the Laurel comes in, uh, Laurel, Maryland, Laurel Wood, where I was living when I got the letter from the FBI. But this is the phone uh, call from the FBI that came to me right after the letter was given to me, June the or mailed to me by the U.S. attorney. He said, um, this is Agent, Special Agent Helms. And he said, um, I have, oh, how did he put that? Now, i got to go back, and I, I had it right the first time, uh, on the first one. Um, he said, this is Special Agent Kian. And then he said something about Helms, and he spelled it H-E-L-M. Oh, oh, this is what he said. I'm also Agent Helms, and he spelled it H-E-L-M-S. Okay, he said, I've got to go. Uh, hang on, I'll be back. Well, I forgot when he came back. Now, I had this right this morning. I don't put all this up here. But anyway, uh, Richard Helms, the CIA director, keeper of the, uh, keeper of the secrets. Uh, so he got into that. Uh, now then. All the antifreeze was put in me. I finally got the uh, Max husband. Can you believe it? After they took me to Huntsville, I took my apartment, took me to Huntsville, Alabama, in the condition I was in. It, God only knows I wasn't supposed to live anyway. Then later, he's the one that got it. They wouldn't let me have it, and he gave it to me, showing where they put it in me. And that was nine days later after they put it in me on April Fool Day. I was supposed to die. And uh, I guess that's all I was going to put up other than I can remember some things now that I can remember, okay, uh, Baker was the assistant U.S. attorney, and the letter was uh, signed by him for um, U.S. attorney William Harper. And I can remember going back up, and it was like he was waiting on me. And this was Baker. This was in, like I don't I can't remember. It was after the antifreeze, and I was back there about 1982. And he said he was standing there just like he's lounging around from the U.S. Attorney's office. He introduced himself, and of course I knew who he was then. He said, "We'll see you again, you know, when you get back." Well, I didn't know what it meant. I was in so much hell. Uh, but anyway, there along the way, I can remember um, a couple of U.S. attorneys. We were at one of them's home, and I believe, I can't remember if this was in Huntsville or in uh, when we lived in Atlanta, but we were in his home, and he left me in his, he had an office in his home. He and his wife, my husband, uh, were outside talking or in the other room talking and um he come back in and he said if i can ever help you i will just let me know so there have been some good uh americans most of them uh sell their soul it's okay to have kidnapped me and i'm a monarch and take down my father and proclaim today's Veteran Day, and I'm supposed to salute, salute your friggin' flag. I'm going to go now. I don't know if this one will go up or not. And you can tell by my voice that uh, I'm having a bad time. Now, I want to say this, too, if this will go up, uh, if I've got enough on the video. They're talking about all this in Alabama. 
1979 when I got this letter, and they're talking about uh, his name is Roy Moore, and he's running for Sessions' um, uh, seat, Senate seat. And, of course, Sessions is U.S. attorney now. And I was hoping that Sessions would uh, tell about all this, what they did to me in Huntsville, disregard Atlanta and up here and everything. So now they're going after George Wallace, by the way, was shot in Laura, Maryland. I said that. And Lana Dempsey, mother of the twins, the psychopath, uh, where they put me. And JFK helped kidnap me. His dad was ambassador to England in 36 to 46. And they kicked him out. And he was put there by uh, J uh, Roosevelt. Now, then, there's a lot going on in Alabama. And I, you know, there were some good people in Huntsville. A lot of them were bad. And letters from Jack Hartsfield told them how much of the Illuminati, the Freemasons, were there. They were mayors. And uh, I've still got the letters. I've put them up. But there's so many I've put up, you'd have to scan through a bunch of them. But Jack was FBI. And I was going, let me uh, see if I can get this up, if I've got enough time left. I was going to uh, tell a little bit about the book again, or the letter he sent me. But the, I had a lot of them, at, but somehow I'd misplaced this one. And some of them have been taken from my files. It, Salvador Vizzini uh, was an um, FBI agent. Uh, so this is from Jack, and he lived in Santa Clarita, and he visited... Uh, Larry Flint, and this is June 25th of 2008, so they knew each other. This is an email to Salvador Vizzini. Now then, here, I'm going to go and say this Sal uh, came over, was sent over from Atlanta, uh, sent over to Huntsville, became police chief. Sorry about this. <laughs> This probably won't go up either, and it's about out of time. Uh, and they saved my life, and that I'm going to try to get this up because it's almost like Jack was trying to say, yeah, I am uh, FBI. I knew that. Um, but Salvador Vizzini wrote a book, and it was not a big, thick one. It was about 200 pages, but I read it. And it said in there, if he told all he knew, he'd be killed. And he mentioned CIA director, too, uh, Keeper of the Secrets, Richard Helms. So now I'm going to go over here to, uh, if I can get it up here, and then that's all. I'm going to try to put this up. The other one that had it more, more coherent and everything, uh, I did about two hours ago now, I guess. But here he says, uh, doesn't seem possible uh, that it's been almost 29 years since I first met you in South Miami. And... You said I'd never forget, and I haven't. Well, uh, Jack went through a lot, and I'm sure Vicini has too. And uh, I happen to know that there uh, was one sheriff, or mayor, I can't remember, I think he was sheriff, that um, at least that tried to help me, and I'm making a mess out of this. Sorry about that. I'm uh, <laughs> in pretty bad shape. What's going on here? So uh, I'm going to let this go. Uh, I don't know that this is not like the first one I put up uh, that they won't put up. It it was one that was, uh, I was crying, but it's, you need to know what I went through. The world does. It's not okay.